Hey, how's it going? And welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today, uh, recording this, at time of recording this, it's the 29th <laughs> of December, so I thought, why not go through the whiskies that I got for December? Be a little bit narcissistic, maybe boast a little about what I got, because I did get quite a lot, and I'm very grateful for it. So let's get down to it. So, the first whiskey I got came from my uh, girlfriend's dad, Stevie, which is Darkness. Uh, I believe it's by Atom Brands, who are Master of Malt, Petiki Whiskey Company. And this is a six year old blend. Stevie's been wanting to try these for a while. Uh, he's always kind of pointing them out, he's been quite curious about them, so he's finally got me one to try. Uh, this might not be up his street though, as it's Campbelltown. It's 58.1% and it's an Oloroso cask finish. The only downside to these bottles are they are 50 CLs. So I'm quite interested to see how this compares to uh, my Dornock Campbelltown blends and also uh, I think it's Gauldrons it's called or Cauldrons. I'm pretty sure it's Gauldrons with a G by Douglas Lane. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares to them as I've had them both. Uh, yeah, all also cast finish. It doesn't really have uh, every whiskey in the Darkness series has undertaken a final maturation in sherry uh, octave casks. So it doesn't really say it's probably bourbon to start with. I'm assuming uh, it's quite a light colour, even though it's had that finish in that octave. It must not be in the octave for very long. But like I said, I'm I'm quite intrigued to see what this is like and what it's got to offer. Uh, it says limited edition on the box, uh, which is. I don't know how limited that these things are. Uh, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that there was loads of bottles. So I'm, I'm not sure how limited these are. But it says limited edition on the box anyway. I don't know if that's anything to go by. Next is a whiskey that my mum and dad got me. And my girlfriend pointed out. Uh, kind of suggested to them. And I'm actually really uh, quite intrigued to try this. This is a Blair Athol uh, 12 year old. Yep. And I'm not sure who this brand is. It says DS Taman. I'm not sure who. Bottled by Dalkeith. Uh, bottled by Dalkeith Brokerage, England. So I wonder. If, surely this isn't bottled in England. Uh, but I'm not sure who who this is. What company this is. I've not actually came across them before. You guys might be able to tell me in the comments. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything on the box, but. There's not really much on the box about actually who's behind it, what kind of parent company is behind it. But anyway, DS Taman, which I've never heard before. Bordeaux edition, so it's a Bordeaux wine, there's 383 bottles. Uh, it's bottled at a 46% ABV. So it's quite different from independent bottles that I'm used to. I'm used to usually cash strength independent bottles. But this one is uh, obviously been chill filtered, maybe not chill filtered, but obviously been watered down to a, a, a kind of lower ABV. But 46% obviously still a good ABV. It's non chill filtered, no added colouring, all those good things. So it's got a lot of good, interesting things on here. Um, nose, palate, taste. It's got your cast number, which is good to see. Uh, distilled November 2008, bottled July 2021. Matured in a hogshead and finished in a Bordeaux wine barrique. Uh, so we don't get any in uh, information on how long. It's been finished for. Uh, I probably could do some research and check who actually behind this company if it's just DS Taman and how long they finished for. But I'm actually really excited to uh, try this and it's not something I was expecting to get. So my girlfriend and my parents have done quite well on surprising me with that one. Continuing on the subject of Blair Athol, we have another Blair Athol here, which is a single cast release from Cooper's Choice. I've had a Fetter Cairn from Cooper's Choice which Stevie has in his collection, and it's actually really enjoyable, really fruity, tropical fruits, uh, all those good things you expect from an independent bald fetter cairn. So this is a uh, Sautern cask finish. It's It says single cask release, but I'm not sure... Can it be single cask if it's still... if it's finished in something else? I, I wouldn't assume it could be. I'm not sure how that works. I think this might just be the range that they're calling it. Uh, single cask release. I, I don't think, surely it can't be called single cask if it's been in more than one cask. Uh, or does that just, is that just negated by vatting? I'm not sure, I'm not that smart. Natural colour, non-chill filtered, 
Uh, this says 2009. I'm trying to see what age we've got yet. Yeah, 2009 to 2021, so another 12 year old. Uh, and yeah, matured in American oak with additional aging and sautern cask. Oh, it says over 11 year old. So it's just over 11 year old, it's not actually 12 year old. Uh, cast number is on there as well, 307, 303, 288 bottles, and like I said, saute and cast finish. So I'm wondering if it is single cask then, if they keep that whiskey in one uh, American oak cask and then into the saute and that still counts as single cask. I'm not sure, once again, somebody else smarter than myself will be able to tell me in the comments. But yeah, I'm really looking excited, really looking excited. Really looking forward and excited to trying this Blair Atho, the Sautern and the Bordeaux side by side to see what similarities there are and what differences there are. So this comes in a, a rather annoying box, but yeah, Stevie got me this, uh, my girlfriend's dad again, he got me this one, uh, he got me a few, and yeah, I'm really quite looking forward to that. Next, another one from Stevie, and this is a the whiskey exchange bottle there's not a lot of information on this label uh, it says have a whiskey christmas on the bottle it can be customized and it says a wee christmas dram for stuart allison 25th of december 2021 now stevie done a little bit of research prior to buying this bottle and he believes that it's ben nevis it says highland single malt uh, what he was reading what he was finding his research came up that it could be ben nevis uh, it doesn't state an age just says matured in a single sherry butt. This is one of 950 bottles, 48% ABV, doesn't state about colouring and doesn't state about chill filtration. At 48% ABV, probably not chill filtered, and if it's one sherry butt, I reckon that's not got any colouring on it. That's probably all sherry. But we can't say it's chill filtered or not chill filtered or add the colour or not add the colour, it just doesn't say it on the bottle. But I like the label. I do like the whiskey exchange labels that they do for like whiskey shows and that, these kind of funky, uh, almost art deco type labels. It's got an old car on there, aeroplanes, <laughs> and yeah, the, the art deco style. I really like that. So it'll be interesting to see what this is and to see if we get a kind of Ben Nevis, a fruity Ben Nevis or a dirty, funky Ben Nevis, as Ben Nevis has quite a range. So it'll be interesting to see what we're going to get with this one. Really looking forward to this as well, uh, as it's quite mysterious and quite... An enigma. Ooh. <laughs> um, a whiskey from uh, Brandon, which is my girlfriend's brother, is this AD Rattray Fair Cairn 12 year old. I sent him uh, a couple, he was asking for suggestions. I sent him a couple from AD Rattray because I know that they produce quality at the best of times. And this uh, obviously stuck out to him. It's been one that I would enjoy. It's unchill filtered, natural colour, 46% ABV, and yeah, it's, it's, it's matured fully in bourbon. So I think this will be quite different to the normal fetter cairns we get. I think it will be quite typical of independent bottled fetter cairns that I've had in the past, but it will be different to official bottlings. Uh, and, and that's what I like about these independent releases. They give you a, a different light, a different idea of the distillery without all the marketing, without all the maybe sherry influence that some of them do, like Tam Doom, uh, McAllen and all that. Um, I'm trying to think, Glen Goyne. It gives you a stripped back, more uh, down-to-earth, honest look and approach to the distillery itself. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that as well. I'm just going to keep saying I'm really looking forward to everyone. Uh, I can't exactly be ungrateful and say I'm not looking forward to any of them. One from a girlfriend now, and it's, surprise, surprise, another Blair Atho. This is a uh, James Eady, 13 year old. I have got uh, an 11 year old James Eady there, which is tasty enough. Uh, I'm not getting through it at that quick a rate. I've kind of slowed down on my Blair Atho intake for some reason, I'm, I'm not sure why, but I'm just seem to be uh, straying away from it at the moment. But I've got a few to get through, uh, and it's not like I don't enjoy them anymore. I still enjoy Blair Atho. So this is, I'm not sure if I sent my girlfriend this one or not. I might have. Uh, I'm sure I sent the other one, but I might have sent this one. This sounds real interesting. <laughs> uh, this is this has got my my interest peaked. Uh, it's rather intriguing. It's got a cast number on here, 3887. It's 13 year old. It's 58.2% ABV. It's hefty ABV. Uh, distilled on the 7th of September 2007. 
bottled 2021, doesn't give you a month or anything. Finish, first film, Marsala Hogshead. So, first film, Marsala, ah, sorry. Yeah, so finish, first film, Marsala Hogshead, Oak Upirin. I can't speak. Yeah. Finish, first film, Marsala Hogshead. Oak European finished for 25 months. Marsala's cast finish, cast strength. Exclusively selected for United Kingdom. So yeah. Uh, once we get past my stuttering and lack of words, lack of knowledge and lack of articulateness, uh, hopefully you understand what I mean now. Anyway, I, this has got me uh, stumbling over my words because there's a lot going on here and I think it will be quite um, different to my normal Blair Athos. Once again, we've got a lot of different Blair Athos here. The normal ones I get are usually bourbon, so now we've got a Marsala, we've got a Sauternes and we've got a Bordeaux. So it's going to be quite hefty getting through all three of them and seeing the differences. I'm actually struggling with keeping this sealed at the moment. I'm quite tempted to just crack it and see what the first impressions are like. But then the video will take too long. We shall wait. We shall, we shall wait until a better time. Uh, next from my girlfriend is one that I definitely sent her. Is a Tullibarden 13 year old from good old Whiskey Broker. No chill filtering, no added colouring, may contain small traces of cask sediment, which I cannot see, but this is about as um, transparent as a bottle you can get. Although, in fact, there is everything on the label. It's age 13, bottle number 193 of 243, first fill, Sherry Hogshead number 11, filled 12th of August 2008. Bottled 6th of October 2011. Everything you need, single cast bottling on this label. And 13 year old Tullabarden, I don't think it was very expensive either. These these bottles are usually quite cheap, so value for money is probably there. Hopefully it tastes good as it looks, because it does look a nice uh, kind of red sherry colour there. So yeah, I'm sure that'll be amazing. Label squint, but you know what? <laughs> I don't care, as long as the whiskey's good. Next from my girlfriend's dad, Stevie, is a Gordon McPhail, Gordon and McPhail, Her Hermitage collection, Hermitage selection, uh, connoisseur's choice, I don't know, words, random words, wood finished, Hermitage cask for three years, so it's been finished for three years, uh, matured initially in a refill Sherry Hogshead, a lot of information on here, 4,040, 4,440 bottles, uh, batch 20074, it's Regions Island, it's a Lechek, it's from Tobermory, uh, 12 year old and it's got tasting notes on there as well. We opened this on Christmas uh, because I had Stevie's Kalila Hermitage, same bottling, uh, same bottler and uh, same kind of range. It was a Kalila 14 year old I believe and I absolutely loved it. The It's probably one of the best Kalilas that I can think of or recall that I've had. So Stevie was toying with the idea of getting me one of those again, that Kalila. But because I've already had it, I don't really like to... Sometimes when I've, even though it was that good, I st I, there's too many whiskies to explore. I don't like to get bogged down on trying and having the same whiskies over and over. So he got me this Lechek. Uh, I had another Lechek in his collection that I really enjoyed. I've, I've had my Whiskey Exchange Lechek from the 2010 London Whiskey Show, I believe it was, or the 10th anniversary London Whiskey Show, and I'm just going off on a tangent. Anyway, I like Lechek, and this just seemed to, to appeal to me as well, with the Kalila being the same maturation, same kind of style, and obviously the Lechek and Kalila having a lot in common with the kind of heavily peated elements, the, the, those kind of burnt bacon, maple bacon, smoky elements. So this just seemed to kind of tie down to my palate, Stevie thought. And we had it on Christmas Day, and what I remember from Christmas Day, even though I was actually quite ill on Christmas Day, unfortunately, is I remember like smelling this and just thinking this is actually really nice and it's got a lot going on and I can't wait to explore it, can't wait to review it. Uh, so it's bottled at 45% ABV, which is really interesting. I've never really, I don't think I've came across a 45% ABV whiskey. 45% on the dot. So they've obviously watered it down a little uh, to bring it to that ABV to get as many bottles as well. I'm not sure if it, it could be a, a vatting of casks. It doesn't say, did I say single cask? I don't think I did. Uh, I don't think I said a single, no. So it must be like a vatting. But anyway, it doesn't say about 
chill filtration, no it does, sorry, always non-chill filter, these single cask and small batch expressions. Uh, so it must be small batch, I don't know if I read single cask or not, I'm just uh, kind of going off on a tangent here more. Anyway, we'll put that back and we'll, we'll see what the rest of the whiskies are uh, before, before this video is two hours long. Another one from Stevie, uh, quite interesting and quite surprising. Our uh, WhatsApp group, uh, Taps Aff International Bottle Sharing or Bottle Splitting, uh, whatever it's called, T-A-I-B-S, it's either splitting or sharing, I always get it wrong. We actually purchased this bottle to split between us, we've not split any of them yet, we've got all the bottles sitting, uh, there's a few bottles there, so we purchased this bottle to split between us, and then I opened it on Christmas Day, not really realising what it was, and then I sent it to the group chat, I said, oh look what I just got. <laughs> And the guy said, oh, that's one of our bottle splits. Which isn't anything bad, isn't anything uh, to deter me from opening it or anything like that, because I think I'm just going to give my side of the bottle split and split it between the rest of the guys, because I've now got a bottle, so there's no point in me taking my split. So it's a 19-year-old Brave Isle, uh, from Brave Isle Distillery. I believe this is Ian McLeod uh, bottling. They're the ones that bottle this. It's Dune... Oh, I'm never going to pronounce that. Dun Dun. Dunbegan, Dunbegan Lock, Dunvegan. I'm not sure what the BH is. It could be V, like Bunahaven, kind of light V. Uh, so Dunvegan maybe, or Vegan. Dunvegan? <laughs> a vegan whiskey? Uh, so yeah, anyway. It's a 19 year old Brave Isle distillery, unchill filtered, natural colour, 50% ABV. We've got the cast number here, 93961. Number of bottles, 804. And it's a port finish. Now, I do enjoy a port finish. It just adds a nice deep richness to the whiskey. And I think this is going to be absolutely superb. I can't wait to open this with Stevie, let him try it, see what his he, his thoughts are, and I want to do it blind so he has no scooby what it is. Because I don't think either of us have had any whiskey from Brave Isle, not that I can think of. So, yeah, I, I want to try and surprise him, see, if, see what he thinks, see if he can get maybe the age, the cask finish, because the port should be evident depending on how long it is. Uh, and hopefully the age comes through as well, that, that 19 year old age, but I don't think you'll get the distillery. You might get the region. Uh, I'd like to have it blind as well to do, have a little, I'll maybe get the missus to pour me one blind at some point to try and figure out, determine what it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to stripping this back and getting right into it. So we'll put it back in its fancy box. There we go. And last but not least, is one from my girlfriend. Now this is Tam Du uh, Cigar Malt. The box is stuck together, so I'm not gonna unstick it now. Uh, but anyway, it's a 53.8% ABV whiskey. It's a cigar malt to be uh, tied together with smoking cigar, like I think um, Tom and Tool have one, Dalmore famously have one, and Tam Du, in line with uh, how Ian McLeod do things at like, uh, um, Glen Doyne, Tam Do, they're always sherry finishes, set, sherry whiskies. So this is exclusively matured in sherry oak casks. It doesn't state an age uh, and it doesn't state whether or not it's chill filtered. I can't see. Uh, no. So exclusively matured in first, first fill European oak casks. I'm just trying to see. Oh, finally, Tam Do. Uh, cigar malt is bottled, unchill filtered and at a high strength. It doesn't say anything about colouring. It says it's a special release, 0170CL volume 43.8, if you can see that at the side, that little kind of note there, and then the sticker says the same. But I'm not sure about origin, origin warranty seal. Yeah, I'm not sure about colouring, but I wouldn't assume they'd have to add colouring to this if it's been matured in sherry. It is a really deep red sherry. Color. But yeah, I quite wasn't um, expecting this one at all, was not expecting this at all, but my girlfriend done well and found it, and yeah, it'll be interesting to try and tie this together with a cigar, and uh, sometimes I don't like cigars with whiskies, but sometimes I do, it just depends on the whiskey, so hopefully this is one of those whiskies, and I'm assuming it should be, or will be, as it's been engineered in such a way, or created in such a way with that in mind. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any gun on it about uh, cigar. 
As with each leaf in a cigar, these rare casts deliver both colour and taste while owing everything to nature and nurture. The final flavour coming exclusively from our oak casks and single malt spirit with nothing else added. So yeah, it's naturally presented, which is quite good then, that's pretty much what they've said there. And uh, yeah, natural colour. It does say on the back, in bold, natural colour, I just missed it somehow. Anyway, that is what I got for Christmas in sense of whiskey. Uh, is there any, if, if you want to leave any comments, let me know how stupid I am with regards to uh, how to pronounce things <laughs> and just general stupidness. Uh, yeah, please leave a comment and tell me how stupid I am. Um, if you want to leave a comment in the, as well, let me know like, what your favourite is, what you'd want to try, what you'd want to open and what I should open first. I've already opened the Lecheg, as I, I've said. I'm really tied between opening the James Eady Blade Athol but also the uh, Cooper's Choice and the, what was it called, DS Taman Blade Athol. So the two wines, or the three wines really, the Marsala, Bordeaux and the Sauternes. So yeah, let me know what you think I should open first, let me know what you would open first in the comments below. And once again, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope it's been somewhat interesting and not just a complete ramble like everything else is. I've been Stuart, this has been Whiskey Wims, I'll see you later.